Hi there and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer. So today I am sharing some tips for using embossing folders and doing ink blending. I think ink blending over a textured background is a great way to kind of highlight it and really make the dimensions stand out more. I have some tips for that and I also have tips for getting detailed blending. Sometimes you want to do ink blending in small areas so I'll share some ideas for that. So I have multiple cards and I'm hoping that there's something here that you could do with products you already have. All of these techniques can be done with any embossing folders. By the way, I encourage you to watch long enough to watch these butterfly cards because it's one of my favorite products from 2022. Before we get started, I did want to talk a little bit about the ink I will be using for my blending today. Lately, I've really liked using the Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink for blending. Now, this is a water reactive ink and it's a little bit thicker than a regular dye ink, so you can blend with them easier. It's also very easy to clean off your stamp and there are beautiful vibrant colors in the collection. There are three in each little family, so light, medium, and dark as you can see here. These are sold in sets of three or you can buy them individually. There are reinkers available too. This is a foam pad which is a little bit different than what I normally use. There are other ink lines with foam pads too, you can definitely use those. I just find that these are excellent for blending. I use them for stamping, but really a lot for blending. Now here I'm using a basic blending brush and I'm applying some of a, the lightest color down and then I'll come in with the slightly darker color. So this will be the three shades from light to dark. Notice how easy they blend. You just go overlapping and it'll blend. I don't find a need to knock some of the excess ink off of my brush before bringing it to the paper. Because this ink is a little creamier and a little thicker, it allows you to blend it more. So you don't get those harsh lines. See, even when you get a harsh line, you can kind of blend it out. It reminds me of blending with Distress Oxide inks. However, these are a little more vibrant and don't react to water the same way as Oxide. They do react to water, but not like Oxide. Oxide is a unique breed on its own. But these are beautiful for blending. If you're looking for bright inks, great for blending and also good for stamping. This is a great option. I will be using these inks throughout this video today because I'm doing a lot of ink blending. Now as far as blending tools, I'm telling you there are a lot of blending tools out on the market, many different brushes. I use a variety because they all work good and I think it's good for you to see a variety so that you can see different brushes in action and maybe choose which might work best for you. There really isn't a bad option out there, but if you want the traditional brush handles, I do recommend these from Simon Says Stamp. There's the large brush and then these new detailed brushes. There's a round one and then one that's kind of an oval. I personally like the large and the detail one. I think they even have a size in between these, but really there's no need to have every size of brush. I think a detailed one and a large one really will cover your bases. I do dedicate a brush to each color and I stick with that. Any shades of pink will get my pink brush. I don't have multiple shades of a pink brush. Also, I try to stick with using dye inks with the same brush and oxide inks with a different brush because that has a pigment property to it. But other than that, you can do this ink blending with any tools that you may have or any inks you may have. These are just what I chose today because they blend so well. As for these little caddies that I'm holding my ink brushes in, there's a lot of options for that too. I like these two options. The one on the left is from Simon Says Stamp. The one on the right is from Gina K. And I glued a Lazy Susan to the bottom of it so it spins. I got that tip from somebody over in the Gina K Facebook group. I will link to all of that below so you can easily find it. But again, there are many options, so hopefully there's something that will work in your craft space. Okay, let's get started with our first example. Believe it or not, this one is pretty quick to pull together. I'll be using an embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp, and this embossing folder comes with the die. So it's a combo product. It's called Sunflower Field. I think these are brilliant, and I'll use a few in today's video. I like this because you can die cut a flower and pop it up against the background. You'll see me demonstrate that a few times. Now I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine today, but you could use whatever machine you may have. 
I have some heavyweight 110 pound Nina Classic Crest cardstock here. Any white cardstock that's heavyweight should work. I like to add a little moisture to it before putting it into the embossing folder. I use a baby wipe to do that, but you could mist it with the spray bottle if you prefer. Now I'm putting this right onto the platform with one piece of cardstock shim and running that through. No cutting plates are needed with this machine. However, it felt a little loose, so I took another piece of cardstock and slid it in there so it's a double cardstock shim. You can experiment with your machine to see what works for you. You can use these folders with all the different machines. Look at the beautiful detail, especially at the center of the sunflowers. Absolutely gorgeous. So you could do this on plain cardstock and make a simple card, but I want to add ink to it to kind of color the different areas. So I'm using the Simon Says Stamp saturated ink. You can see it's a foam pad instead of a hard felt pad. Most dye inks have a felt pad, but many more companies are coming out with this foam pad. And this particular ink is thicker, so look how fast I can easily blend it over each of those flowers. I'm using my Simon Says Stamp blending brush, the largest size, and that really is a fast way to apply this ink over each. You could do each flower a different color if you wanted to, but I really like the idea of having these sunflowers in bright traditional yellow. Okay, so after I put down this lighter color of yellow, I'm going to come in with a slightly darker color. This is like a light orange color. And I'll apply that just more towards the center of the flower, not towards the outer tips. So this will add even more look of dimension to this. We're just enhancing the dimension we have there from the embossing folder by adding the inks. Notice that this blends very easily with the color underneath. I am speeding it up to save time, but it's taking no longer than that first application of color. Next, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Detail Round Blending Brush. That's the new one. This allows you to get into those small areas. So notice I'm putting brown ink at the center of the flowers. That would have been hard to do with a bigger blending brush. So if you have a bigger blending brush, I encourage you to consider a smaller detailed brush. There are a few out there. The nice thing about this one is it's the traditional handle, which most people are more accustomed to blending with. So you apply it in the same way. It just has a smaller brush area to it. So I'm putting this latte ink right over the center of the flowers only. The nice thing is, is this is darker than the color underneath it. So we didn't have to do any kind of masking or anything. Now this ink goes on very creamy and really thick. So if you get it somewhere you don't want, you can kind of wipe it over and easily blend it out. That's one of the nice things about working with an ink that's easy to blend with. It really makes it faster and easier. Now I'm coming in with a dark brown ink and just doing like a little spot of color off center at the center of the flowers. And again, I'm using that round brush. You could also use sponge daubers or even your fingertips to do this. So we put quite a bit of ink over this. So I'm going to run this through my embossing folder one more time just to really pop that dimension back up. I don't know that this makes a big difference, but you might as well do it. It doesn't, it's not hard to do, it doesn't take long. You can kind of pop it right over the dimension in the folder and then run it back through. It lines up very easily. And this way we can be sure we have as much dimension as possible. Now you could leave this as is. This is nice and bright and you can see the detail, but I'm going to make it even better with a trick I've shown in videos before that I think makes a huge difference on any embossing folder background. And that is to apply white pigment ink over the raised areas. I'm using my Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink and a Tim Holtz Brayer. I love this tool and highly recommend it. I put white ink onto the brayer and I'm rolling this over our background. Only the raised areas will grab that white ink. This kind of softens everything and it allows the dimension to pop even more. It makes it stand out even more. If you want your background to end up darker, you could go over it with a darker ink, but I like to kind of start bright and then pull it back with the white ink. Now look closely. Notice that the details in the center of the flowers stand out more and you have that nice highlight on the petals. This only took me about 15 minutes to make, thanks to that great embossing folder and how easy those inks are to blend. All right, now let's create that sunflower that's popped up off of the background. Remember this embossing folder comes with a coordinating die. 
And I found that this die fits nicely around this flower over here on the right. So I'm going to mark my die and mark my embossing folder. I'm just putting a black V because I know those two things line up. Now this piece of white cardstock here, I ran through the embossing folder making sure that flower is on it. And now I'm applying ink just like we did before. I want this flower to look like the rest, just be popped out a bit. Now that little V I put on the die and the embossing folder, those two little petals where the V is, that, those two petals stick out more than the rest. So it really stands out on the die and the folder. So now I'll take that die and line it up with the flower we just created. And I'm going to put it up against those two little petals that stick out the most up there on the top right. I'll then tape that in place and run that through our die cut machine. However, when we do that, that squishes our embossing, right? So I'm just gonna put this flower back into the embossing folder. It lines up very easy, you can see through it. And we got that little V as a guide. And I'll run it through my die cut machine again. Now we'll apply that white pigment ink over it just to create that highlight and make it stand out even more. I put foam tape behind this flower and added it right back into its spot, lining it up with the background. Super easy to do. If you wanted this to stand out more, you could have inked it in a different color. For a sentiment, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Hello Sunshine. This is a great sentiment to use with any bright card. This is a perfect example. Now a lot of people ask how I cut my dies apart when they come connected. I have been using the new Hero Arts Snippers lately. The reason I like these is they have a sharp point so you can get into tiny little areas and there is a cap to keep them safe. Now when I cut these little pieces of wire or metal, I don't snip them off. I clamp them with the snippers, as you see here, just softly, and then I wobble the die back and forth until it breaks. That keeps the little piece of metal from shooting across the room. I do it over a baby wipe, and then I can wrap it up and throw it away. That way you can be sure you don't have those little pieces of metal going everywhere. Okay, so I used the shadow die and cut that twice from white cardstock, glued it together, and now I'm gluing it onto our card base tucked underneath the flower that we added popped up. I then will put something heavy on it while it dries, and then I will add onto that the Hello Sunshine word. That's cut from black cardstock twice, glued together, and then glued in place. The reason I add the dimension by stacking multiple die cuts together is so that it's strong and will hold up better through the mail. When you have lots of this popped up and overlapping each other, it's the best thing you can do to make sure it doesn't get creased or crumbled in the mail. I finished off the card by adding some gold gemstones for a bit of sparkle. All of this is on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folded white note card. Now you could, if you wanted to, do each flower a different color or make the, col the flower that's popped up a different color, but I love that traditional sunflower look. So this shows how you can do easy ink blending over an embossing folder background to highlight that texture and really make it stand out. Okay, our next example is one of the fastest cards I've made in a long time. I usually spend a lot of time on cards, but this one was fast. And I think it would be fun to do a set of these in different colors and give them as a gift. Now for this, I'm using another new Simon Says Stamp embossing folder and die combo. This is fantastic because the die cuts out that large flower, so you can add it back onto the background. It's best to first die cut the flower and then use the embossing folder. So I die cut it from heavyweight white cardstock, and then I'm lining it up in the embossing folder. It's very easy to see through to line it up. Once you have it in place, you can close the folder and run it through your die cut machine. You could even use a piece of tape in there if you need to. Now again, I'm running that through my Spellbinders Platinum, with the platform and two pieces of cardstock as a shim. And look at that beautiful detail. You could use that on any project, but I thought I would line it back up with the whole background. So here I have our embossed die cut and I'm applying some of the saturated ink to it. I wanted the top of this flower to be a soft peach. So I'm using the big brush to apply a light amount of ink, making it more white towards the tip or leaving it more white towards the tip. Then there in the center of the flower, I'm using the detail round brush to add a darker peach. That's one of the advantages of a fine, smaller detail brush. 
Now I thought I was going to use this against a bold background. That's the one you see in the bottom left there, but I end up changing my mind later on. Now over the leaves and the stem, I'm applying a quick amount of green ink and then a slightly darker amount of green ink in some areas. Super fast to blend thanks to this rich ink. Now here I'm going in with even a darker amount with the small brush towards the center. Now I want those details of the embossing folder to show through. So now I'm using my white pigment ink and a brayer to just roll over the whole thing. That really enhances that texture and makes it stand out even more. You could go more bold with your ink beforehand, but I wanted a soft overall look to this flower. Now I changed my mind. I didn't like that against that bold background, so I decided to switch it to a white background. I'm adding a little bit of moisture to my white cardstock and putting it into that same embossing folder and running it through my die cut machine. By applying that moisture first, you get more detail from the folder. Again, you could use a mist of water if you prefer. At this point, I was unsure if I wanted to use the white background or the bold background. You could use either option. On the bold, I did roll some white pigment ink over it with a brayer. But in the end, I decided to use the white background. Now I want to put more dimension back into that die cut before we glue it onto our card. So I lined it back up in the embossing folder. I promise it's really easy to do. And I'm running it through one more time. Then I put liquid adhesive on the back of that die cut and popped it right in place over our embossing folder background. That's Gina K liquid adhesive. Now that background is trimmed down and added to a peach note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. For a sentiment, I'm using one of my all time favorites, the Simon Says Stamp All About You stamp set and the coordinating die set. I like that these sentiments have dies available to cut them out so you can easily add them anywhere on a card, even if the background has texture like this card. So I'm inking it up with Versamark ink and stamping it twice just to make sure that I get a nice crisp image. I will then sprinkle on gold embossing powder and heat set it. After I heat set it, it has a little bit of texture to it. Most embossing powders do. I want that to be a little smoother and have more dimension. So once it's cool, I put it back into my stamping tool, ink up the stamp with Versamark ink and stamp it right on top of our heat embossing. This applies more ink so we can add more embossing powder and heat set it again. This will give us a very smooth heat embossing and it'll make it stand out more with more dimension. After I heat set that, I will use the coordinating die to cut it out and then we can glue it right onto our card. I finished it off by adding some white pearls here and there. This card didn't take me long at all, about 20 to 30 minutes, which is fast for me. And I love all the detail in it, all of the texture, thanks to the embossing folder and that bit of ink blending. You could definitely go darker with your blending to make it more bold, but I wanted something soft for this particular card. Okay, my next example is also very fast and super forgiving and great for bold cards. Now for this one, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Floral Harmony Embossing Folder and Die Combo. Again, these come together. So I'm using just the embossing folder on this particular one, but remember, you could use the dies to pop out some of the flowers. So I've cut a piece of Hero Arts Lapis Blue cardstock and I'm just adding a little moisture to it using a baby wipe. This is one of my favorite colors of cardstock. I'm putting that inside of the embossing folder. You can kind of see through it to line it up and then I'll run that back and forth through my die cut machine. After running it through, notice that you get beautiful dimension on the front and the back of this piece. Now I'm using the front of all these pieces where the image is raised, but I wanted to show you really quickly that you can use the back. On the back side, I'm running white pigment ink over it with a brayer and look at that beautiful result. You could even use a darker ink if you wanted to. Now I'm not using that technique in this video, I just wanted to show it to you briefly. In this video, I'm applying ink to the front of it where the flowers are all raised. Because these flowers are tiny, I'm using my detail blending brush, the round detail blending brush, and I'm applying a darker ink than the background. So this is the uh, Simon Says Stamp Twilight color, and that's a beautiful periwinkle. I don't have many inks that color, so I'm really excited about this collection. And because I'm using a detail brush, I'm just applying that darker ink only over those raised small flowers. Now it doesn't look so great here at this point. 
but we're going to use that white pigment ink and a brayer and go over all of the raised areas and that will really make it stand out. So what happens is in the deep parts of the embossing, you have darker color and in the raised parts, you have white. I do like to use a dry cloth to kind of buff that down so it's not too much contrast, but then you end up with this beautiful, it looks like um, faux pottery. Like I remember my dad collected Rookwood pottery when I was growing up and it had this beautiful texture on the outside. That's what this looks like, it's gorgeous. If you get any white pigment ink where you don't want it, like these little edges or flat areas, you can use your mono sand eraser just to sand that away and no one will ever see it. And look at this beautiful result that you end up with. Doesn't take much time at all and all it uses is an embossing folder, colored cardstock, colored ink, and white pigment ink. To create a faux stitched mat for this piece, I use the Gina K Designs Master Layouts 2 die set. Her master layouts die sets are great for anyone who wants basic layering dies that don't require measuring. They're fantastic. So I used the faux stitch rectangle and cut that from a navy cardstock. And I'll glue that right behind our bright, bright blue dimensional piece. For a sentiment, I wanted something small that wouldn't cover up the background. I decided to use a hot foil plate to create this just a note sentiment. This is from Memory Box. It has a small hot foil plate and coordinating die. I'm not showing the foiling process because that's not the point of this video. I just use my Spellbinders Glimmer machine. If you want to see how to foil like that, I will link to a video up here on the top right. I used a bright blue foil to match our background. Now for the note card itself, I use the Gina K Designs Swiss Dot Embossing Folder. This is great because it's five by seven, so you can use it on a five by seven card, mini slimline, or a basic A2. Now my card is A2, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and made from white cardstock. I then added our background along with the Just a Note sentiment, and that's it. I feel like it's best to leave this simple so that that technique that we used on that floral embossing folder really stands out. I do feel like this is most impactful with bright cardstock or dark cardstocks. Okay, now it's time for what I'm most excited to share with you and that's a couple butterfly cards. Now this new product from Simon Says Stamp, the Graceful Butterflies, is amazing. You have the 3D embossing folder and the coordinating dies. This allows you to create lots of different size butterflies with detail and texture to them. I have two cards using the set. I like butterflies because you can use them for many occasions. I use the dies to cut from some heavyweight white cardstock, adding a bit of moisture to them with a baby wipe. Now you just look through the embossing folder and line up the die cut and run it through your machine. I do usually prefer to die cut first and then use the embossing folder. It just takes less time that way. And look at the beautiful detail you get to this white die cut. It looks good with just white cardstock, but you could use colored cardstock, maybe a gold foil cardstock, and it would be amazing. But today I'm taking these white cardstock die cuts using the embossing folder, and then we'll apply ink over it just as I've been doing. But I wanted to show you first how easy it was to line up the die cuts with the folder to add that quick texture to it. For my first card, I wanted to use the small butterfly just to demonstrate you can do blending even on a small area like this. So I'm doing a rainbow of butterflies going down my card. And on each butterfly, I wanted one color towards the center and another color towards the edge. Here I'm doing pink towards the center and red towards the edge. I'm again using the saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp because they're so fast to blend with. And I'm using the small round detail blending brush, which allows me to apply that little bit of color to the center and the little bit of color to the wings. I feel like this is a good example of why it's good to invest in small detail blending brushes so you can get into those small little areas. It allows you to apply more color and use even your smaller die cuts on your projects. So I added some green to the tips of these particular butterflies and then yellow to the center, creating kind of a lime color in the middle. That's the advantage of doing blending. You can mix colors together and create beautiful results. After inking up all of my butterflies with different colors, I am applying white pigment ink over the raised areas using my Brayer tool. 
that will really enhance the texture and also soften it a bit so that I have a softer overall look to my card. If you want it to be darker, you could use Versmark ink with the Brayer and add some clear embossing on it. Now for the background, I'm using the Altenew plaid embossing folder. I've used this a lot in videos. It's a great basic detailed folder that is great on any card. I use that with white cardstock, and this piece is cut to five and a half to about three and three quarter inches. At the top, I'm gluing two of the pink butterflies that I created. Then I'll move to the bottom, and I'll glue two blue butterflies down there. Then I'll start to fill in the area between with the other butterflies. You could use a ruler to make sure this is all spaced evenly, do some pencil marks and so on, but honestly, I'm just eyeballing it. By starting at the top and the bottom, you narrow down that space in the middle where you can add three more. By using liquid adhesive, I can wiggle things around until they're spaced where I want them to be and straight. And then when it dries, it'll hold on well. Make sure you use enough of the liquid adhesive because remember our background is textured, so you want it to kind of get into those nooks and crannies and hold it nicely. For sentiment, I used the Simon Says Stamp Brushed Flowers 6x8 stamp set. I like this set because it has lots of coordinating dies available to go with it, including coordinating dies to cut out the sentiments, which I'm always a fan of. Off screen, I white heat embossed sending hugs on black cardstock and cut that out. Now here's my finished card. I matched it up with an Inkblot Shop painted envelopes. She has beautiful colorful envelopes that are great for colorful cards like this one. Here you can see the final result. I did add a few little gemstones to the center of the butterflies instead of the little antenna and body. I thought this was kind of fun to do instead. You can see the texture on the wings and the texture in the background. Adding texture with embossing folders is a great way to step up your cards and embossing folders don't have that high of a price point and can be used for many great techniques. Now I really like that butterfly embossing folder and die combo so I did another card with it using three of the different butterflies in the combo. So I die cut the butterflies and ran them through the embossing folder as I showed you before. And then I did really quick ink blending using some of the new colors from Simon Says Stamp, which I showed you at the beginning of this video. So I did like a bluish purple towards the center, purple towards the tip of the wings, and then I used the small blending brush to add some pink in between. Again, that's one of the advantages of having a detailed blending brush. And you can see how quickly I was able to add color to that. I did the same on two other butterflies, one medium and one small. You can see with that small die cut, it's definitely helpful to have a smaller blending brush. Now you can see how fast it is to add color to these white die cuts with ink blending. However, if you don't have inks or aren't as comfortable with ink blending, you could also do so with markers or whatever coloring medium you prefer. Use whatever is comfortable to you. To me, ink blending is the way to go, so it's faster and easier, especially if I'm using inks like these that blend so nicely. After I'm done inking them, I do put them back into the embossing folder and run them through again just to enhance that dimension a bit more. And then the white pigment ink with the Brayer make that dimension stand out more. If you want to, you could go over that with a darker ink and that would make higher contrast and make it darker, but I like that softer look. Now I put this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card and I use that Gina K Swiss dot embossing folder to add dots to the background. I added the little body and antenna to each using a darker like periwinkle cardstock. And then I added a simple sending paper hugs die cut sentiment right over it along with some purple gemstones. Now that sending paper hug sentiment is from this Honey Bee Inside Kindness Sentiment stamp set. There are coordinating dies available to cut that out. I've used it a few times in videos and I just find it's great when you just need a small, simple sentiment. And again, this card was pretty quick to pull together. All right, so I hope this inspires you to use your embossing folders with a bit of ink blending to create texture cards that don't take long to pull together. If you're interested in the supplies I use, they are linked below in my YouTube description. I always have them there. But you can also check out my blog, which will be linked here at the top right. In the middle here, I have a couple other related videos that I hope inspire you too. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.